Hey y'all, Sterling Who here, and we are back again with Steins Gate. So, last episode, we spent a lot of our time conversing with the one, the only, John Titor, about the many worlds theory and how we thought, you know, we had jumped different world lines and stuff, and he's all like, you have a special gift to be able to retain your memories and everything. And apparently we're kind of doing time travel a bit different than how he is, so he's super impressed. But Ogren and myself are kind of suspicious that he's all like, you have this special power, you're the chosen one kind of thing. And so, yeah, it's just a bit awkward. Um, let's see, Daru is at uh, caf the cafe. Um, Mayushi is also at the cafe working. Uh, Daru forgot his wallet, so I'm sure there will be some conflict there. And Moika and Luca kind of went up on their own way. Suzuo went on to work and everything. And uh, Grisu has been hanging up under us, just kind of sitting. And we're not letting her in on, or anyone apparently, in on the fact that we actually did time travel. So, that's fun. Anywho, need to reply to that tighter guy. So, what is beyond the wall? What will happen when we cross it? The wall being... Time? I don't remember. He's been very good about res oh, getting back to us. If we cross the wall, we will have freedom. If we do not, then the dystopia- Oh yeah, right, changing. That's what it is. The wall is being actually able to change the future. Um, if we do not, then the dystopia I come for came from will be your future. In exchange for providing false peace and joy, your masters will stamp out every last vestige of free will. As I said on that channel, my goal is to change that future. And you may be the one who can make that possible. You're the chosen one, Ogrin. I know. I, I don't know. Okay, now it's getting creepy. Yeah, it's weird. Is this some new cult? Or is he really trying to con me here? He's also contradicting himself again. Uh, the Tidor who appeared in, two th in 2000 said he traveled back in time to retrieve technology lost in World War III. Yeah, this guy's saying he came to prevent the creation of a dystopia ruled by CERN. I mean, it could be one and the same, man. Or maybe your divergences have had a bigger effect than you think. This guy might be an imposter. I'm fed up, so I quit replying. But just as I'm about to put away my phone... Tch! Let's see who this asshole is. Oh, it's John Tidor again. Kyoma, I want you to be the messiah. Yep, this is a troll. <laughs> messiah raises the hair on the back of my neck. What is this? Fear? Disgust? I don't know, but something is very wrong. It's a troll. Somebody hacked his account. Right? Or is something actually important going on there? What just happened? Chapter 4. We're already that far in. <laughs> Feels like barely anything has happened. Messiah now. In Christianity, a title for Jesus Christ. One who brings salvation to mankind. Savior. Three, who uh, one who rescues others from peril. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like Ocarina. Mad genius. Been done. Creating chaos. Taking over the world. Blah, blah, blah. Salvation now. Deliverance from pain and suffering. From the Kojian Dictionary. John Tidor is a fraud. <laughs> I scream at the absurdity. When did you get here? Daru and Krisu give me an exasperated stare, but I ignore them. Guys, you have to feel my pain. Me? The Messiah? Huh? Ludicrous! To think that I would save humanity. Never! What's humanity ever done for me? I am no Messiah. I am the insane mad scientist who, all with Kiyoma, was walked through fire and bla bathed in an ocean of blood to escape the clutches of the, of the organization. Yeah. So, so cool. <laughs> My desire is chaos unending. Do you think that destroying the system will bring pre peace to the world? The answer is no. No, I say. Never, not on my watch. Death to the naive fools who believe such lies. The collapse of authority means that lawless chaos shall reign. Mwahaha. <laughs> um, Kisushi, what the hell happened to Okarin? Uh, beats me. A few hours ago, he was exchanging emails with John Titor, and then he suddenly got quiet. And then he just started ranting. He's been like this for half an hour. Okay, so he just came back in that time, man. Uh, he's been acting strange all day, don't you think? 
Agreed. And apparently I need glasses now because everything is blurred as shit. <laughs> there we go. Ugh, oh, listen up, lab men. It's time to resume Operation Erd. Seriously? The manager's still downstairs, you know. Fret not, it's almost closing time for Braun Tube Workshop, and then we can experiment to our heart's content. <laughs> uh, the phone wave doesn't work out tonight, remember? Oh yeah, time schedule. It's worth a try! We need to figure out how late the phone wave name subject to change works. We only estimated our time before, now we have to really test it. At the same time, I want to see if the two of you can use emails to change the past. And, you know, retain your memories. Change the past? Anything? No? Ideas, Kurisu? I still don't believe in the many worlds interpretation or Titer's attractor field theory. Actually, I'm starting to doubt them more and more. If we want to know how the world works, we'll have to figure it out ourselves. And to do that, we need to experiment. Gotta push the bounds of science. One thing that I'm sure of is that um, the mass disappearance in Akiba is related to the d somehow. As is the strange disconnect between my memories and everyone else's. I keep on meaning to go back and look at the previous episodes and stuff to check on that, but I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> According to Tidor, I have supernatural power, the one I call Reading Steiner. My doubts about Titer's veracity aside, I do need to determine if I am indeed the only person who keeps his memories when the past changes. So, uh, change the past to your liking, as long as it's something easy to observe. Um, preparations for the phone wave name subject to change are complete! Dora's eyes wander to the ceiling in thought, and next to him, Carissa shrugs her shoulders and starts gathering her things. I'm going back to my hotel. Show me your report on today's experiments tomorrow. Oh, stay! Hold it! When I grab her by the shoulder, Carissa nearly topples over. Come on, it's not that hard. Hey, what's your problem? Uh, who's writing that report? You're my assistant, Missy. You, of course. This is your operation. And if we could get a report from the subject, too, that would be even better. Uh, Carissa glances at Daru. Are you not interested in changing the past? What happened to your eagerness to experiment? Did I kill it with my changing of the past? Did you forget what I said this afternoon? I'm against it. But you were so enthusiastic when we began the experiment. You went along with everything, uh, along without a single complaint. If you're in your dreams, maybe nope. Okay, so yeah, different different things. Change of the. Changing the past, change the future, change the present. I twist my lips into a grin. You're not being objective, Christy. Celeb self. Which is it? <laughs> if you're going to correct yourself, at least get it right. We're all, we've already performed one experiment. I changed the past. Did it. Did it. Have my memories to prove it. <laughs> hey, no fair. Ah, uh, but you were in on it too. But when the past changed, you forgot that it ever happened. Are you talking about this afternoon? I mean, when you suddenly started talking about the Lotto 6. Asking about the Lotto 6. Uh, exactly. That was me, bitches. Me changing the past. I explained what happened earlier this afternoon. Well, that was quick. You're not joking, are you? I am serious. I just traveled through time, bitches. Seriously? I mean, can you call it traveling through time or traveling through dimensions, more like? Uh, well, I could look at my face and Darger seems to understand that I'm not joking, for once. Carissa, on the other hand, has a sour look, but she's always like that. Always glaring at us. Angry eyebrows. Why did everyone else lose their memories? Actually, did everyone else lose their memories? In order to find out, I need to perform the same experiment. Um, okay, there's one thing about the past I definitely want to change. Dara is quick to adapt as a win. I got mail. Mayushi! Mayushi won a magazine sweepstakes once. Amazing, huh? You know, the hero of Gum uh, Gumbam? Satsuri? I won an autograph from his voice actor. Amazing. Let's see what the magazine is. You're still reading a magazine? You're a true otaku. Gumbam. Satsuri, is he from the latest Gumbam? I haven't uh, seen it. The original is the best anyway. <laughs> and voice actor. I never knew Mayuri was a uh, voice actor, Otaku. 
I uh, don't want to stamp on her thing or call her. It. I guess we'll just voice actor. Why not? See where that gets us. <laughs> bye bye. And away the mail goes. Hey, Hidaru is quick to adapt as always. We've known each other for a long time, and he trusts me implicitly. Or maybe he's just being faithful to his desires. Uh, what are you going to tell yourself? To go on a diet? I won't diet even if the future told me to. Even if future be told me to. Dara tells me he wants to change the events of the Ferris Cup held at May Queen Yan to the second degree. What? Power to- whatever. Ah! A few days ago. On that day, Daru got insta-killed by Ferris in a rain at Axis Valley's match. Can we change that? You're going to change the result. I remember every move Ferris Tan made. It will be easy to take her from behind. Aren't I a genius? I'm not going to touch on that. <laughs> hmm. Ferris is probably too good for that to work. She'll just counter his counter strategy. Whatever, Daru. Prepare the D-mail. See if you can actually do something with it. Oh yeah, I'll give him my best shot. Dara hunches over and starts typing out the mail, leaving me to input the forwarding address into the phone way of name subject to change. I sit in front of the X68000 and take a look at my watch. It is 6.55 p.m. No way to know if the phone wave name subject to change will operate at this hour, but we have to give it a shot. We haven't figured out the exact window yet. So why do you think you're the only one who remembers? You're awfully persistent. I see why they call you the zombie. <laughs> you're the only one who calls you that, man. I don't follow. Zombies never stop coming. They're persistent. Cut the jokes. I'm serious here. Teresa's glare is scarier than usual. I might have wet myself a little there. Damn. <laughs> I think that key is who- uh, That the key is who receives the email. Only the recipient himself is able to retain his memories. That would be my guess. Hmm. Actually, that hypothesis doesn't explain the mass disappearance in Akihabara. Of course, I still don't have concrete proof that the mass disappearance incident was related to Dmail. We'll never know how unless we experiment. After Daru, you'll send the next email. Think about what you want to write. No. Carissa replies in, in fact, Glee. I'm not sending one. Scared, you chicken? That's not it. Then are you worried about time paradoxes and ripping the world in twain? Well, there's that, but it's more like a personal policy. A policy? Change of the past feels like cheating. I may have only 18 years of life experience, but I don't want to change any of those memories. Because they all will make up you. I see, you're perfect now, so you don't want to change. That's not what I said. I don't want to deny who I've been because even my failures are a part of who I am today. Yeah! That's the way of looking at it. Even if we solved all the phone wave name subject to change his problems, you wouldn't use it? Even if John Titor said you could use his time machine to travel to whatever time you wish, you wouldn't use it. Even if a blue robot cat from the future were to jump out of your desk and give you a doorway to everywhere you want to use it. Carissa nods firmly. What's that from? I feel like that's a reference to something, but I'm not sure. <sighs> anyway, Carissa nods firmly. I want it. But you love to experiment, don't you? Um, something wrong with that. One moment. Alright, Beck. So, Ehu, so something wrong with that. So, basically, you like to experiment on other people while you watch and cackle at the results. You truly are a mad scientist, Karisu. Never taking the risk yourself, letting other people suffer the tragedies that could befall the experiment. Oh, yeah. Oh, Daru. Done! Karisu stalks toward me, but is pushed aside by Daru, who presents his phone with a triumphant grin. I take a look. At Ferris Cup, enemy setup, VLVVLVLL. -V -L -L -L. Well, let's see how that goes. I don't get it. Me neither. It's probably the cards. It's how Ferris Tan placed your cards. Can't you tell? You guys are lame. I'm on it, Dario. Don't worry, man. Well, whatever. 
See how this goes. Preparations are complete! If this works, the mail will arrive at Doru's phone 52 hours ago. Did it work? Did it work? Yes, this charge from Namna occurs normally. I close my eyes to shield them from the lightning and sparks. And then, the D-mail was sent. Doru should have received it two days ago. However, why do I remember? When I sent a D-mail earlier this afternoon, everyone else forgot all about it. If Daru's D-mail changed the past, then the present should have changed too. Daru should be the only one who remembers that he sent the D-mail. Did the past change? Well, I guess not. Daru looks around in confusion. Wait, Daru, you remember too? Huh? Remember what? That you just sent an email. Daru nods. And you, Krisu? They turn to Krisu. She answers before I ask. Of course I remember. What are you? Oh, I see. According to your hypothesis, you and I shouldn't remember sending the D-mail. Daru, did you beat Ferris in the Ferris Cup? I don't know. You said that the winner gets Ferris's home cooking, right? Did you eat it? What happened? I don't know. This sucks! <laughs> I checked Daru's sin history. As expected, the D-mail he just sent isn't there. I do, however, find D-mails in his inbox. He received it two days ago, just like we wanted. This is the same thing that happened when I sent my D-mail. Well, I guess we have to go talk to some other people to figure out... Maybe the past hasn't changed? I'll try calling Mayushi. He's the one who changed the past, yet he doesn't remember what happened after the change? That's odd. No, I don't think... I don't think it worked. Because... Yeah, I don't, I don't think this worked. None of, I don't think she should remember. Uh, Mayushi, you're still at work, right? Is Ferris Tan there? She is. Um, can you ask her if I beat her in the Ferris Cup? Did I get to eat her own cooking? Who lost? I, I did? Oh. Barely took five seconds. Oh. Okay. Well, Dara's shoulders droop as he hangs up the phone. He's so excited. Look at go! Mayuri Chan's obsessed with an anime called Rynet, so I rented it to see what it was about. I don't usually watch anime, and when I do, I prefer romance, but I found this anime to be pretty deep, even though it's aimed at children. I was surprised, um... Damn it, lost it. P.S. I was so engrossed in Rynet, I couldn't do practice swings with Samidari. Sorry. Let's get around and land that Roma. Ooh, attachments. What? On right at Kakeru. On the run at future run at formation. Completely engrossed by their discussion, Kirai and Taru Tamaru <laughs> raise their voices. Just what sort of person is Kakeru? Kakeru is actually a warrior who protects the order of the internet. A net guardian, Kirai and Tamaru wanted to tell their friends how cool that was, but Kakaru forbade them due to the risk he may have to fight with the culprit. At that time, they received news that the mysterious hacker, Beesman, has attacked an online game server. Kakaru immediately challenges- is this supposed to be Dot Hacks High? Immediately challenges him to use Nagia Sand- god, that was such a depressing enemy. Gah! Galvitzer! Uh, Nagia Sand's newly made Rynet card and the unique browser Alpha Gate. The first use of the new Rynet card, despite his lack of experience, Kakaru has successfully cast his boot spell. But just when Kakaru thinks he has easily won against the Cracker, Beesman, who has now- uh, who has complete control over the game server, overwrites the game system, sealing Kakaru deep within the game's loop dungeon. Kakaru is in danger! At that moment, somehow, Kirari and Tamaru also server dive. They came to save Kakaru. Furthermore, these two are well versed in this game. As game players, they couldn't forgive the hacker who had taken over the server and toyed with the game players, so they decided to join forces with Kakaru. With their magnificent assistant uh, Kak and Kakaru's shoot ability, they successfully defeat Beesman. And when they do, suddenly an unknown chat window opens on their monitor. It's a signal for to the, from the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department. By any chance, are they here to praise us? They think it delight, but the police turn to them and say, You're under arrest. Dun dun dun! I don't know. 
I like mangas and animes and stuff that are based around, like, inside of RPG MMOs and stuff, even though I hate MMOs in, like, person. Like, I just cannot get into them. But, like, <sighs> Dot Hack Sign and, um, what is it called? Half Prince, I think. It's a really good manga. But, yeah. Just, they're fun. They're fun. Anywho, um, what was I doing? Was that the only attachment? Yeah, that was the only attachment. Alright, um, Rynet. Let, let's see our replies. Okay, no! You're hooked on Rynet? Everyone around me is buying into this Rynet craze. How can it be so popular? Don't tell me it's an organization plot! And romance? <laughs> That's your problem right there. You can't waste your time with romance fluff. If you have that much free time, then practice with the Samadari. I feel like that kind of closes off our discussion. Yeah, what's so great about this? Rynet. <laughs> Mail sent. Alright. What, what were we doing there? Oh yeah, you are being disappointed at life. <laughs> I guess that means the past hasn't changed. Why? It changed for Oakland, right? Yeah, but I did something that could actually have an effect on things. Whereas you kind of had the factor of Ferris, who is a random factor as opposed to a predetermined factor like a lottery number draw. Get the pick? Eh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it changed Rogan, right? Uh, maybe your foolproof plan wasn't a so foolproof. Like, maybe it only gave you a slight advantage. I had the same thought. Ferris is supposedly a world-class player. Yeah, best of best. Doro's time travel cheat may not have been enough. Since Ferrisan defeated you- Oh, since Ferrisan defeated you anyway, the past didn't change. Yeah, but, I mean, the game would have played out differently. That might not be enough to cause a worldwide divergence. Like Okabe said, you need to make it a change that's easier to observe, or else there's no point to the experiment. Um, not, not that I approve of this experiment or anything. Uh, no, it's not over yet. I can still fight! Tori starts typing another mail. One more time. I'll send- I'll try sending my past self some more advice. This time, something that'll ensure my victory. You really want to win that badly? Hey, home cooking, man. Um, more like he wants to eat Ferris's home cooking that badly. I bet it's terrible. <laughs> That's my final answer. Dara writes another Gmail. What's this one say? I don't buy a check and what it says. Boo! I won't understand anyway. We activate the phone wave name subject change and send the mail through just like before. Sparky, sparky, spark, sparks. Oh, nothing happens. No discharge. I guess we hit our time limit. Usually it happens 10 to 20 seconds after pushing the start button. The timer counts down to zero without an incident. Poop. Out of, out of time. Uh, looks like it. Sorry, Dara. But my advice was perfect. There's nothing we can do about it. We'll have to postpone the experiment till tomorrow. I checked the clock. It's just past 7 p.m. Almost. <laughs> uh, looks like that's the cutoff. After I left here yesterday, I was thinking, how exactly does the phone wave make uh, time travel possible? It works like the LHC. Didn't you say the LHC was like a giant microwave? If every microwave could turn into the LHC, then Japan would have black holes popping up everywhere. Wouldn't that be problematic? Whoa, that sounds worse than earthquakes. Sounds like a problem. I know it looks like CERN is able to create curved black holes willy-nilly, but that's not supposed to be possible. You can't just press a button and make a black hole. Even if you could, the risk would be unthinkable. Alright, uh, one sec. Okay, sorry about that. Um, anywho, you can't just press, uh, yeah, even if you could, the risks would be unthinkable, making all them black holes. It's ridiculous to suggest that a household microwave could generate a black hole. Titer's time machine is small enough to fit inside a car, and it makes black holes. Well, that's what he said, at least. Now that I'm a little skeptical of Titer, I don't feel like bringing it up. My point is, there has to be something else going on here. Some outside source that must be injecting electrons into the microwave. An 
outside source of electrons. What could that be? Well, I'm going back to my hotel. I've had enough of this filthy man cave. See you tomorrow. Don't forget to write that report. Peace, Kurisu! Kurisu flings off her lab coat and hurries out the door and just tosses it. Amazing. Oh, she was serious about the report. I am not her secretary. She is my assistant, man. Hmm, <laughs> Makise, she's lab coat. I wonder what it smells like. Daru, no. Down, down, boy. Please don't. A star reaches for the lab coat to smell Kurisu's ling lingering fragrance. I grab him by the neck and pull down hard. Good, Okrin. Good, keep him in line. Cut that out! If you have time to be perverted, then go about how- uh, then, then go think about how to change the past for tomorrow's experiment. You know, do it properly this time. <sighs> there wasn't anything to do after Carisu left. I tried operating the phone wave, name subject to change, a couple more times before I went to sleep, but the discharge phenomena simply would not occur. Now it's next morning. I'm sitting on the bench in the front of the Braun 2 workshop. It's still early, but it's already blazing hot. It's as if I'm baking in the sun. Sweat is dripping off my chin and I'm getting some mails. <laughs> Assistant. Kurisu, did you write it? Have you written the report yet? For your information, I wasn't joking yesterday. If you blow this off, then you have no right to call yourself a scientist. Maybe this is too much for a freshman like you to understand, but writing papers is part of being a scientist. It's also part of every other aspect of college, and it sucks! Uh, okay, so I had to get off on that chest. Um, understand? If you're so confident in your superiority, then show me your power, scientist. I am not a mere scientist. I am the insane mad scientist and report. Uh, let lesser men worry about such things. I have inventions to build and discoveries to make. That sounds important. Um, one more moment. We're about to end the episode, but one more moment. Alright. Well, let's see. I was going with the uh, report, I think. Yeah, let lesser men worry about such frivolous things. Alright, sweat is dripping off my- sweat is dripping off my chin. Just pouring. Got all that sweaty, salty, gross man juice just dripping off. We're supposed to be experimenting today, but not a single lab mem has arrived yet. No Moeka, no Mayushi, no Karisu, no Lu Wait, I haven't made Luka a lab, bleh, lab mem yet. And no Daru. <laughs> After waiting impatiently for a while, the first person I see is... Mr. Braun? M Mr. Braun? That sounds like a Mr. Braun. What do you need? Annie has his daughter. Okabe! Don't you have anything better to do? Good morning, Mr. Okarin. The Tenoji pair come riding on them in on a moped. <sighs> How many times do I have to tell you? Call me Kyoma! So much core. Um, what should I do, Daddy? Well, what nonsense are you trying to feed my daughter? Ugh. <sighs> Have you not properly educated her, Mr. Braun? This child of yours refuses to call me by my true name. Please do something about it. <laughs> Who cares? Don't be so picky. <sighs> Nay, you don't have to listen to what this guy says, okay? Okay. Your purse to bunny of death thing is kind of adorable. Manager parks his moped and quickly enters the store. Sister Braun's about to follow him when... She turns her attention toward the end of the street and instantly brightens up, Sasuha. Had the feeling. I follow her gaze and see my- Oh no, Mayuri walking this way. Mayuri! Good morning, Okarin. Mayuri, my, my darling. Mayuri runs up to Mayuri with a happy smile. Yeah, that seems about right. And without breaking stride, she jumps into Mayuri's chest. Good morning, Nei-chan. Good morning. They get along so well, you'd think they were sisters. Mario has the ability to get along with anyone, so it's no surprise. She is an angel. Nei avoids me and Daru, but she adores Mayuri and always goes for a flying hug whenever she see gets a chance. I mean, to be fair, Grant, you and Daru are kind of like creepy lab coat wearing guys. And I mean, no offense to Daru, but he is a self-confessed pervert. 
and everything, whereas Mayuri is cute as buttons. Anyhow, fly and hide wherever she gets a chance. Daru sometimes complains about that. Why? What a lucky girl. I wish I could jump into Mayushi's chest like that. Okay. Slightly better than what I was expecting, but... <laughs> okay. Uh, no. Wait. Maybe it would be better to have Nathan- No! 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 Ugh. Ugh. Daru, I, I'm ashamed to call you friend. His eternal debate went on for hours. This shouldn't be a debate. This is for you, Nei-chan. Enjoy! Mayuri takes out some candy out of her convenience store bag and gives it to Nei. Yeah, okay, I think that's a good stopping point. <laughs> I mean, we got a little bit of somewhere. We now know that the experiments aren't guaranteed to work if the conditions aren't in absolutes. So we have that going for us. If we leave it up to chance, like with the um, Ferris thing, then yeah, things could go wrong. But we have, we have concrete here, all right? <sighs> but we'll be able to experiment a little bit more with it, you know, later on. And hopefully our lab ends will start showing up. So, yeah, that's what we have to look forward to in the next episode. So, until then, you know, like and subscribe if you guys want to. And thank you for watching.